Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to my next lesson in the modern C++ series. In today's lesson, we're going to continue looking at the standard template library or the STL and looking at the numeric library algorithms. In fact, we're going to be looking at an algorithm known as accumulate. So let's go ahead and dive in CPP reference here and we'll talk about accumulate as we learn about what this is. In fact, it goes by many other names here. So you're going to find that out very shortly here. But again, let's go to CPP reference under numeric library and the numeric algorithms. And we're going to go ahead and scroll down here and find accumulate here. Now here's the little spoiler alert. It is an operation that sums up or folds a range of elements. Now if you have a functional background, which is where this term fold comes from, you might have seen this before. Or maybe you've heard of like map reduce, that sort of paradigm. So this other idea. And we will get to reduce in the next video, so stay subscribed for that. But let's go ahead and first talk about this fold operation and then we'll go ahead and talk about accumulate itself. So in order to illustrate this, I'm gonna go ahead and just open up some code here and a little diagram uh, on the left hand side here. So I'll go ahead and just create some uh, vector here. Let's assume that we have some collection here. Uh, let's have eight elements here. That should be enough to illustrate the point here. And I'll just go ahead and write them out here. And let's say that I want to basically sum up this vector here. Okay, so the basic idea of accumulate is it's a reduction uh, algorithm, okay? Which means that we're taking many things and reducing to one, okay? So it's a sort of like many to one algorithm here. And a basic way that you can illustrate this or maybe visualize this operation is for us to think about basically doing one binary operation like one plus two, again, if we're accumulating these and getting a value of three here. And then I use that previous value here, three, and I add it with, well, this other three here. So I almost build like a little stair step here, uh, if you will here. Uh, so let's do three and three plus three. Here was one plus two. And then I take the result of three plus three and six. And then I sum that up with four and so on here. Okay, so that's the basic idea of how this algorithm looks in which we're taking two results here, so two boxes, summing them up, and then using that result for the next operation here. Okay, so that's the idea of what we're doing when we're accumulating. Now, if I had just asked you about accumulating some value here, so for instance, let's go ahead in our code here, let's create a vector, and we'll go ahead and recreate that example. So let's have our vector. Uh, I'll explicitly set the type to int here, that's gonna be important in a moment here. And then we'll have our values here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, one way that we could approach this is by just using some range-based uh, loop or even just a regular loop here. And basically I would say, well, I is less than the size, I plus plus, and then I would come here and have some sum here. Um, or maybe even a better way to think of it is the initial value here as zero here. And what I would do is keep track of this initial value. Now I didn't want to make this sum necessarily because accumulate doesn't necessarily have to be about summing up things. It's a little bit more generic than that. Uh, so that was the purpose there. But I would take the initial value and I would sum it up with the value uh, at i that we're looking at and do this little accumulation here. Okay, so let's go ahead and just sort of play around with this. This isn't quite accumulate yet if we're thinking about the algorithm. Uh, but let's go ahead and say what the sum is in this particular instance here. And let's go ahead and compile this, make sure that it runs here. So it compiles and runs, our sum is 36. And that should be right if you add one plus two plus three plus four, et cetera. Um, again, you can sort of uh, summarize that as you will, or maybe some of you, uh, if you've been in school, well, let me just write this. Um, <laughs> the way, so, sometimes you learn this formula here, something like this uh, for your summation. Uh, again, there's a nice little story about Gauss here that you can, uh, you know, read about how he was a child prodigy and added up some numbers. That's what the, the myth says, uh, or the folklore, I should say. Um, but anyways, that is a way to sum numbers here. Um, but really what we probably want to do is think of these as pairs, just to think about this as a little bit more of a uh, generic algorithm, I would say. Uh, so let's go ahead and take this uh, example here. And I'm going to go ahead and push it down here. And let's go ahead and say here, uh, let's just call this the uh, result here and the current. Okay, so we initialize these values here. And basically what I want to do here is take uh, and solve for the current value, which is going to be equal to V at 
i uh, plus v at i plus one. Okay. And I could start to think about these as uh, pairs here. So there's a few different ways that you could do this. Again, if you have uh, addition here, uh, then you could say, well, I could do i plus equals two here. And then I could do the result plus equals uh, current here. And let's go ahead and uh, let's see if this uh, checks out for us. The result here. And if I compile and run this, uh, again, our result is 36. I mean, again, this, this happens to work because we're doing an addition operation here. Um, but we kind of want to think about this then in a little bit more of a generic way. Now, remember that we don't really think about, uh, you know, the, these as pairs here because we are using the previous or the initial result here, okay? Uh, but what I do want you to think about is this idea here of some sort of binary operation that we're performing here. So a plus requires a left side and a right side. So we're going to find in the accumulate algorithm that we need some sort of binary operation. And then it's going to take care of like this sort of idea of like what's our initial value and and, and initialize things uh, in a proper way here. Okay. So anyways, with that said, I think we're ready to look more at uh, accumulate. We'll actually click into the page and take a look at it. Um, now, what I will mention, though, however, um, when we look at reduce, we do want to think about how we're going to be able to break things into separate pieces and still get the same result here. OK, so we'll think about uh, breaking things into pairs, for instance. Uh, you know, that's that's kind of a way to think about things. So anyways, with Accumulate, we have a few different versions here. We're going to focus on the C 20 versions because those have uh, const expert, meaning we can do stuff at compile time. Um, and generally, the most sort of uh, the default case here of what we are doing is we're computing the sum, given an initial value and the elements in the range from first to last here. Uh, so if we look at the first version, that's the version up here that has a range specified with the first and the last here. So again, this could be our range for the first two parameters and the initial value here. So this might be zero. This might be something else, depending on your uh, operation. Uh, and again, if you want to do accumulate with some other binary operation, which maybe we'll look at something else, uh, we can go ahead and try with like a multiply or something uh, as an example here. OK, so that's the basic idea here. Uh, so again, here's the parameters. Here's if we want to pass in a custom uh, binary function. And I'll go ahead and scroll down here so we can see some of the possible implementations, just so you can see exactly how this works. And that's the bookkeeping uh, for accumulate. Again, our iterators here and the initial value. And then basically, we're just iterating through uh, or looking at every value here uh, and then incrementing. So an iterator to point to the next element here. And then our initial value is being updated. Uh, so we're taking the very first uh, initial value here, uh, performing some operation. Again, this is the default case is it uses the binary operation for plus here. And we're just adding these two values here um, and updating init. And then the next operation that we do takes the value that we just calculated, which is now stored in init, and then adds the next value. OK, so exactly what we did uh, if we look back at our code uh, here, where we're just basically adding to the initial value over and over and over again, uh, but after computing uh, some sort of sum. So something a little bit closer like this. OK, so we can stare a little bit at this uh, if it makes sense for you, but that's the basic idea. Uh, let's go ahead and take a uh, look at this. Um, and again, std accumulate is basically performing what's known as a left fold. So we're starting from the left hand side or the zeroth element in our collection, the very first element. Again, this could be like a linked list, anything that has a, um, if you look at our iterators here, it takes in an input iterator. Um, and basically just walking from left to right. Okay. Uh, if we want to do a right fold, you reverse uh, your collection. Okay. So that's what it's telling you there. Uh, there are some common mistakes here. I'm going to try to illustrate these in a moment here. Uh, including we have to be careful with this init value or this sort of identity type here, uh, which is what it's sometimes known as, um, and make sure that we have the correct precision for which we're accumulating, okay? That init value, the type that is deduced from there is based off of this. So this value here is some integer type versus a floating type, for example. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and look at some of the examples here. Uh, we'll hold on to, uh, let's hold on to those there, and I'll go ahead and uh, set up our code for the left side of the screen there. Okay. Uh, and let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and add uh, accumulate. So we're going to need to add the numeric uh, header here. So we don't want to forget that here. Numeric. And we'll still use this vector here just to go ahead and check and see what our value is. So let's go ahead and 
Uh, we can do this in a one liner here again, uh, see what the accumulate value is. If I call std accumulate, and I'm going to need v begin. Uh, and actually, let's make this a little bit bigger just so we can see everything on one line. The end. Uh, the initial value is just going to be zero. And let's just go ahead and do an end line there. Compile and run this here. Uh, oops, got a little ahead of myself. As always, no errors in the interesting spot, spots there. But we can see this works uh, perfectly fine here. We are accumulating. We have an initial value of zero from the beginning to the end here. Okay. Uh, now, if we want to pass in some sort of other uh, binary operation, we can do that here. Uh, and I believe it's multiplies. I'll have to check that here uh, for the binary operator here. Let's go ahead and check that out. Uh, that works here. Uh, now, we get zero here. Uh, why? Well, we're multiplying uh, zero by something, by you know something else here. Uh, so let's go ahead and update this to something, some sort of idea identity function, right? One times something won't change the value. Uh, and now we get 4,000 uh, and uh, 320. Uh, and you can check that. I mean, think about what the operation is that we are actually doing there. Uh, actually, if I go on my other screen here, right? I'm doing one times two, right? Taking my first two elements, uh, getting some result here, two. And then I'm taking that value times, well, what was our next value here? Uh, well, I'll just circle it here, three. Okay, so I'll bring that down here, times three, which gives me uh, six. So again, I'm just kind of drawing this like a tree, times four, you know, equals 24, et cetera, et cetera. All right, this is eight factorial. Uh, so that is the value here. Uh, congratulations, you've just written a factorial function with no loops, uh, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Um, now, of course, if you want to calculate larger values, you might want to memoize this and so on, uh, like you learn when you learn dynamic programming. <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and take this example uh, just a little bit further to show you the one little gotcha with accumulate uh, that I want to make sure that we uh, take care of here. I'm going to call this vector v2. And let's go ahead and just give ourselves um, you know, some other reasonable numbers here. I'm just going to make these all 0.1 here. Uh, and then let's take this accumulate here. I'm going to make these v2, v2 here. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, let's add these. Uh, okay, so 1.1 plus 2.1 plus 3.1, etc. Uh, let's go ahead and give this a run here. And oops. Now, GCC here was being pretty good. It's giving me a warning about narrowing, which I'm uh, getting to. Uh, so let's, you know, let's use our fancy uh, C++ should be able to deduce the type here. And let's go ahead and run. And hmm, we still get a value of 36. Uh, okay, so that is the issue here we have to be careful about. If I've got eight values, I'm adding 0.1. Uh, not quite right here. And again, you could ask yourself, well, did C++ deduce the right type? Did it do it here on the template argument? Uh, no, we still get 36 here. Uh, and just to be clear, I'll type uh, v2 accumulate here, uh, just so we can see that, yeah, it's still 36 here. Uh, where it deduced the wrong type again, remember, is this initial value? That's where it's deducing the type from. So if I make this 0, 0.0, we should see something uh, different here. I'll go ahead and run this here. And now I'm getting the correct 36.8 here. So we do have to be a little bit careful with the accumulate function. Uh, again, this is why I try to be pretty precise. I usually put like a uh, 0.0 or 0.0f after most of my numbers here, because uh, that is one gotcha spot with the accumulate uh, function here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look at this. Um, and again, you can see the example. Uh, only other example they have here is where they're doing the right fold if you want to do things from right to left in your collection. Um, so again, that is something that you can do. So again, if you're coming from a functional background and maybe you've missed uh, some of these algorithms, again, this is a great reason for why we want to always learn the standard template library uh, because these algorithms really are powerful. Uh, so as always, you can check out my uh, website here to catch up on all those STL videos. They're here on this playlist. It's free. You can keep track of your progress uh, otherwise. And I hope you enjoyed that video on Accumulate. Hopefully it was useful. Hopefully uh, C++ is becoming more and more fun, especially as you learn some of these standard template libraries. And we explore, again, some of the little gotchas. Like, again, just making sure. And again, it's just a general good habit that you're 
annotating your types as much as possible. I am a fan of that um, because occasionally when you're using templated uh, data structures or algorithms, that is an issue that you can run into. So again, it's just a little thing to keep in mind as you maneuver the language, but it, it makes sense why it does that. Um, and this might be a case too for using static analysis tools. I don't know if CPP check um, catches onto it right now, but some of the other uh, tools might, maybe Visual Studio's uh, analyzer, for instance, uh, might catch some of those little bugs here. Again, the bug that I'm referring to, let me actually just go back so I'm uh, being very specific here, is again, just make sure that your initial type is uh, what you want, because that's what it's deducing it from uh, at compile time from a template. So. Um, just one little thing to keep an eye on. Anyways, folks, with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. And as always, uh, feel free to engage in the discussion below. And I'll look forward to chatting with you again. So thanks again for your time and attention. And we'll see you in the next one.